Our final contributed talk is from, from Matthew Lyon from the University of Manchester, who's going to talk about angular super resolution diffusion MRI with a 3D recurrent CNN, oh, convolutional autoencoder. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, don't worry that there's a lot of jargon in that title. Hopefully, uh, I'll do a good job of explaining what each of those words mean throughout the talk. Um, if you want to learn more uh, about this topic, once I'm done, um, there's a paper published under the same name um, that uh, has a lot more detail in it than I could fit into this talk. So let's start off by discussing what um, diffusion MRI. So diffusion is simply the random motion of uh, particles, also known as Brownian motion. And diffusion MRI is a modality of magnetic resonance imaging um, that measures the diffusion of water in specific directions. So diffusion MRI or DMRI is a widely used uh, imaging modality, particularly in neuroimaging, because white matter has specific diffusion characteristics, um, which can be modeled in a DMRI acquisition. And then that, that information can be used to uh, diagnose different pathologies or to track uh, disease progression. So uh, importantly, in a DMRI acquisition, data, uh, diffusion is measured one direction at a time. So first of all, you might want to measure it in that direction, um, and then in that one, and then that one, until eventually you build up kind of a picture of the uh, overall diffusion profile of whatever you're measuring. Um, so we call that formulation um, Q-space. So each Q-space sample uh, is itself a three-dimensional um, diffusion intensity image uh, measured in one direction. Each direction is uh, defined by what's known as a B vector, which is simply a vector in 3D space. Um, and the more B vectors you acquire, the higher an angular resolution you have. Um, with a higher angular resolution, the better an ability uh, you have to resolve the diffusion characteristics of whatever you're measuring, but at the cost of a much longer acquisition time. Uh, so higher angular resolution data sets are clinically a bit prohibitive because of how long um, they take. So this project uh, focuses on increasing the angular resolution, not by measuring more data uh, Q-space samples, but instead by inferring uh, new ones or previously unseen, um, given a small uh, context data set. So uh, we do this by, um, so we developed this uh, three-dimensional recurrent convolutional neural network autoencoder. Uh, the autoencoder consists itself of an encoder and a decoder. The encoder's job is to calculate a uh, latent representation view of the entire Q-space, given only a uh, subsample of uh, Q-space samples. And then this latent representation view is passed to the decoder, along with some target B vectors um, to produce your output uh, three-dimensional um, diffusion images. The encoder consists of a three-dimensional CNN, uh, which is then connected to a three-dimensional convolutional LSTM. Uh, the convolutional LSEM is a recurrent aspect of the RCNN. Um, so the 3D RCNN in the encoder, its job is to uh, calculate features specific to each Q-space sample. And then this is aggregated by the three-dimensional convolutional LSEM to produce your uh, latent representation view. That's then passed to a 3D CNN decoder along with your target B vectors to produce the output. So uh, after developing this architecture, we uh, trained on 27 different subjects from the Human Connectome project, along with three uh, subjects for validation and then an additional eight for uh, a test set, which these results are derived from. So uh, we compared performance uh, against a baseline of spherical harmonic interpolation, which is kind of analogous to a Fourier transform, but defined on a sphere. So it works quite well with this Q-space formulation. 
um, and additionally against a one-dimensional variant of our model to verify the uh, effectiveness of the three-dimensional uh, spatial convolutions that we included. Um, so we uh, ran a few different experiments um, using a few different uh, subsampling schemes uh, of sizes 6, 10, and 30, as well as a few different uh, diffusion intensities or B vectors, um, B values, sorry, of 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000. Um, and in, across all of these experiments, we found that the three-dimensional uh, RCNN performed best or had the lowest error. Um, and an example of that you can see from the top uh, right-hand side of the uh, slide, which is an axial plot of a root mean squared error um, in one test subject. Um, so in addition to just inferring in um, the raw diffusion data, we also compared performance in the downstream analysis technique. So we chose uh, diffusion tensor imaging because of its uh, ubiquity in a clinical setting. It's very widely used. Um, and in this case, we had an additional baseline of constructing this uh, diffusion tensor imaging data from just the subsampled context data set. So that formed our main baseline. Um, and in this case, we found that only the three-dimensional RCNN uh, performed better than this baseline. Um, and that's likely because uh, DTI is, uh, whilst it is widely used, it is quite a simple diffusion model. It's probably the first diffusion model um, developed for this technology. Um, and so it's quite robust at low angular resolutions and doesn't really benefit from the high angular resolution um, data sets that maybe other more advanced uh, analysis techniques might benefit from. Um, so uh, to conclude, uh, we developed a three-dimensional uh, recurrent convolutional neural network model uh, to perform angular super resolution in diffusion MRI data um, we found that it performed best across varying different uh, subsampling schemes and diffusion intensities. Um, and further work will uh, focus on looking at performance in different analysis techniques, ones that require higher angular resolution data, and then um, also looking at or exploring different uh, deep learning architectures or ideas that can kind of better capture the unique geometry uh, present in diffusion MRI. Um, so thank you for listening. <laughs>